Hello and welcome. Most of us, including me, invest in broad ETFs. S&P 500, MSCI World, maybe some Europe or emerging markets. I've always wondered which stock market actually performs the best, especially when you're just for risk. And this is super beginner friendly, nothing fancy. It doesn't get simpler than this. So let me show you what I did. I pulled roughly 20 of the major global indices, US, Europe, Japan, India, China, Brazil, the usual suspects. I'm using Y Finance to download the daily prices starting from 2020. Obviously you can extend this analysis so you can go further back in time or you can take a look at only 2025. The sky is the limit. Then I'm calculating daily returns and accumulate them to make the indices comparable. So let's execute that, downloading the price data and then plot the return of the indices, which you're seeing here. On first sight looks pretty messy to be honest, but even in this chaos, you can already see some patterns. If you have followed the markets, this is not surprising for you. So obviously at the top is the Nasdaq. Europe is basically flattish. China's been struggling and India actually doing surprisingly well. Same as Japan with the Nikkei, which you might also have noticed following the markets in the most recent time. Now to make this a bit clearer, let's just take a look at the top five performers over our period. So let me copy paste that. For some reason I got rid of this line. So you're seeing here, not surprisingly, again, the NASDAQ top performer nearly tripled since 2020. We got the Nifty here, we got the Nikkei here, the S&P 500, not surprisingly. And also this one, I didn't know that before, this is the Kospi, I hope I pronounced that right. That is the Korean one. I've never heard of that one before, but this also seems to run pretty well here. By the way, how I'm doing that technically is I'm taking the cumulative data frame. So this is just the daily returns accumulated over time meaning this is the first day, then the second day, cum cumulative return, fourth day, fifth day, and so on. So this row here is the overall cumul cumulative return. That's why I'm taking the tail here, because I know this is the overall cumulative return. So I just have to take that and take a look at the top five values to get the top performers here. And this one, super convenient function from Pandas, this is transforming a uh, data frame. I'm using that a lot because it's super useful. Let me show you how that looks step by step. So the tail is obviously just looking like this. So I have it as a data frame. Then I'm squeezing that to a series, have it nicely like this. So I'm getting all the tickers cumulative returns on the last day. And then I can just apply an largest. Super convenient. Just as a side note. Same story for the smallest, here are the bottom five. Well, we have Europe here, sadly, so with the FTSE, one of Europe's most well-known indices here. We got Australia here, our Australian boys and girls. And obviously we got Hong Kong struggling a lot, even losing money over the uh, period. Also got Brazil and Shanghai here at the bottom. Now, raw performance is obviously also interesting, but doesn't tell us the full story. Some of these markets might only look great because they're extremely volatile. So let's take a look at the basics, annual return, volatility, and a simple sharp ratio, which basically tells you how much return you're getting per unit of risk. 
So this is what I'm doing here. As you see, sharp function calculating the sharp ratio. So you take the mean return minus the risk free rate. I'm setting it to zero here, which is obviously wrong because risk free rate is somewhere around three-ish percent. Depends a bit where you are in the world. In the world, but uh, you can amend that. Doesn't change much here. And then set that to relation to the annualized volatility in the form of the standard deviation of the returns. So you just pass the returns to this function here. And then this one, this is a classic maximum drawdown. So what you're doing here is you accumulate, then you search for the cumulative max, set that into relation to the cumulative return, and then set that to relation to peak. So in the end, you wanna know when taking a look at the minimum then, what is the max loss you made from the perspective of the peak of your PL or return? And then finally, I'm just putting that all in a data frame. So mean return times trading days, standard deviation as volatility times trading days, square rooted, and then applying the sharp ratio function on the returns and the maximum drawdown function. And this one is a pretty interesting one. So this metrics table, I'm sorting this by the sharp ra ratio. So the risk adjusted return here. And you see a pretty interesting uh, picture here. You see that the NASDAQ has the highest sharp ratio. So even though you would expect, okay, this has the highest return. Maybe this comes with a lot of volatility. This even beats everything else risk adjusted. So you see this has the highest sharp ratio. I might show that the other way around. This is a bit misleading. So this is ascending. So you can just turn that around and now you see it the right way around, right? So just top at the top and lowest at the bottom. Interestingly, max drawdown is 35%, which is quite a hit. Then second one, which is also an interesting one, is the Nifty here. You might expect India volatile market, insane return, but also sharp ratio wise, quite a good pick here. And then, I mean, you can go through this table for yourself. For me, probably the European Markets are more interesting, as you can tell from the accent. But I'm also investing a lot in the good old United States. So this is the global comparison in a nutshell. And this whole analysis, obviously, is raising a really interesting follow-up question, at least for me and honestly for every person working in investment, finance, quant finance, whatever you want to call it, that is, can you outperform these indices by a combination of indices? And you are getting to something like, you know, a couple of years ago, people were saying, yeah, you have to uh, buy the MSCI world and mix that with the emerging markets with a factor of 0 0.x, and then you get a optimized return, which is BS in the end, as everyone knows who looked into that. But if you do some portfolio optimization, you could actually get a, the best combination of indices. And this would be your best pick. And from a coding or programming or quant finance perspective, that is a extremely interesting task. So let me know if you're interested in that. I'm happy to go through that with you together. That's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts below. Did you expect that something surprised you? And yeah, I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye. Bye.